Oh, hey, uh, didn't see you there. Um, I'm just, you know, trying to figure out what app I want to use uh, by Google to listen to music. Uh, and that's actually going to be the topic of today's video. We're going to talk about Google's music app mess that they have going on right now. You have YouTube music, you have Google Play music. And if you like podcasts and you can choose between Google Play music and Google podcasts. So what's going on in the Google universe when it comes to music apps and, you know, audio in general? And what is their strategy looking like? That is what we're going to cover in today's video. All right, so to properly talk about Google's music apps, you don't know where you're going if you don't know where you came from. So let's take a quick trip down memory lane and see what Google's been up to this whole time. So Google Play Music launched back in 2011. And when they launched Google Play Music, it actually didn't even have the play in there because the uh, Google Play Store was not even named the Google Play Store at that time. But uh, when they opened the service, it was mainly a music locker. Plus, they had the ability to purchase uh, songs from different labels as well. I think every la major label except for Warner Music was the uh, like one standout. But all the other major players were present on uh, Google Music at the time of launch. And it was great because you had a music locker where you could upload up to 50,000 songs, plus the songs that you purchased were not counted towards that 50,000. So if you're like big into mixtapes, if you were on like that Piff or like, you know, uh, mixtapes.com or something like that, uh, downloading mixtapes, you didn't have to worry about, oh, you know, I have this music, but I can't really listen to it in this app, whatnot. You were able to import all that music you had put it in there and you could have it mixed in with your purchases. So that made it so you really had like a one stop shop for music at that time. Then uh, Google eventually added the uh, Google Play Music All Access so that way you could stream everything. So that's the model that you get now where, you know, it's similar to things like Spotify and Tidal where, and Apple Music where you pay a subscription every fee every month and you get access to the entire music library. Um, another quick stop along the road was back in 2014, Google acquired a company named Songza and Songza, uh, their claim to fame was that they made curated playlists for different activities, uh, you know, so different locations, um, and also like for the weather. So if it was raining out, they had like, oh, it's a rainy day playlist. If you're at work, they have a playlist to help you focus. If you're at home, something to relax. If you noticed you were at the gym, something to pump you up. So it was like this location-based, context-based music service that Google acquired and integrated into Google Play Music. So that was an awesome pickup. It really changed, you know, the the way that the music app worked for you and made it a lot better. And it was already pretty solid at that time, but that really helped put it. Uh, push it over the top, especially for someone like me who loves having new playlists to look at all the time. So now we move a little bit further up the timeline. It's 2015 and Google is realizing that one of the significant things that people do on YouTube is actually listening to music, whether it's watching music videos or just listening to some music track that they can't find or want to share with the friend, but that friend doesn't want to purchase the music or, you know, they don't have a same subscription service they have. YouTube is an easy way to share music with the masses and Google wants to capitalize on that. So in 2015, alongside YouTube Red, they launched YouTube Music and it gave you the ability to have an uh, app dedicated to looking at music videos as well as if you just wanted to listen to the audio from them and not necessarily listen to the or watch the video while you're listening to the music, it gave you a space to do that as well. Now, Google Play Music was going along, but this was another offering that they had. And if you had a Google Play All uh, Music All Access subscription, you had access to YouTube Red, which also gave you access to YouTube Music. So you had another option for you. Now, in 2018, that's when Google released the current version of YouTube Music that you see now. <clears throat> and the reason why I'm bringing it up now is because when they redid uh, YouTube Music, they said that by 2019 at the earliest was when they were looking to shut down Google Play Music and transition everyone over to YouTube Music. So the YouTube Music app as we see it now represents Google's vision of the future of their music platform as Google Play Music eventually will die off. So now with Google Play Music out in the universe and the redundancy between that and Google Play Music, we know that Google Play Music eventually is going to be sunset. YouTube Music is going to take over all the subscribers to uh, Google Play Music. 
But one of the things that's holding that up is the fact that the heads at Google want there to be parody, feature parity between Google Play Music and YouTube Music before they go ahead and complete that transition. One of the features that Google Play Music has that YouTube Music does not leads us to the third app we're going to discuss, which is Google Podcasts. So a lot of uh, audio services provided by Google here. Uh, so let's talk about Google Podcasts some. So a month after YouTube Music was launched in June of 2018, that's when Google Podcasts was launched. And that was just a standalone podcast only player. Uh, it's a little bit more plain. Some I could see some people calling it ugly. Uh, for me, it's very clean and straightforward. It gets right to the point of here's your podcast. Here's what you want to listen to. Boom, let's get into it. Uh, so if you like that simplicity and also if you like the separation, which I definitely appreciate, uh, that's a great feature to have like a standalone podcast app. Uh, for me, that comes in handy because when I'm driving, I like to listen to music. But when I'm at work all day, I have my headphones in, I'm listening to podcasts. That way I could have the, you know, down a little bit lower than when I'm listening to music so I can hear things in the office, but still can hear my podcast completely you know, fine. But I don't have to worry about losing my place if I'm in the middle of an album and then I get back in the car, you know, my podcast is going in the same app that I listen to my music in. Now I have to remember what track I was at, you know, if I didn't finish listening to that album and I'm listening to it for the first time. So it's kind of nice to have that podcast music separation for how I like to consume music. But for you, that might be different. You might want everything in one place. And then that could be a feature that hopefully YouTube Music will get, you know, further down the line. If you are a Google Play Music subscriber and, uh, you like having everything in that one centralized location. So getting back to what I was saying with Google Podcast. So it launched in, in 2018. It's a standalone app. So that way you have access to your podcast. And that way it kind of fills the role of having that podcast, you know, ability while not having it in, in YouTube music if you don't happen to use Google Play Music. So now that we've talked about all three app platforms that Google has for audio, let's talk about some pros and cons with them. I'll start with Google Podcasts since we're already on that topic. And with that, one of the things that I've noticed, uh, not through personal experience, but because my girlfriend has a podcast and she's, I've overheard some conversations she'd had with uh, her podcast producers as well as some other friends of ours who are podcast producers and the difficulty with Google Podcasts is that it's not easy to troubleshoot if you have an issue because of the fact that when you search on Google for a different issue you're having, for example, if the cover art is dropping off or if uh, the feeds are getting mixed up for some reason, if you start searching on Google, you're going to find results for how to manage your podcast on Google Play Music rather than how to manage your podcast on Google Podcast. And that is a problem because it creates a lot of confusion in the marketplace. Uh, one of them even thought that Google Play Music was going to live on and that Google Podcast was actually an old platform that was going to die off. Uh, so that's something that Google really needs to get together because they're creating a lot of confusion out there. And if you're searching on Google to troubleshoot for a Google product, the right product should be the one that comes up. So Google Podcast should come up as the default resu result if you're searching for troubleshooting in Google Podcasts specifically and not Google Play Music. Uh, so that's definitely a huge con on that end. Um, as far as a pro, I do like that it has a great recommendation engine to it. Uh, so that's something that if you have used any Google service, you know you're always feeding that algorithm and that creates a lot of great suggestions from Google. And that carries on to Google Podcast as well. Uh, so with those recommendations, you don't have to worry about you know trying to find a new podcast because you just don't know what's out there or you're relying on you know different podcast networks and they're promoting things within their network or having a guest from one podcast come on another and finding out about it that way. Google is going to bubble up those great recommendations for you and really help you widen your horizons when it comes to the podcast you're listening to. Now let's move back to YouTube Music being that that's the main point of uh, conversation, especially with the fact that it's going to be taking over everything from Google Play Music and feature parity is a huge part of that conversation. So with YouTube Music, currently it does have that uh, same integration that Google Play Music got with Songza. That's been imported into Google or into YouTube Music and that adds a lot of uh, nice, fun, context-related uh, playlists to YouTube Music that definitely come in handy. Um, it does have that great recommendation engine as well. 
Um, and one thing that has happened with the most recent updates to YouTube Music is that the sound quality is a lot better. So before when it was playing the audio from uh, videos, the quality was very hit or miss. Now the quality is pretty consistent across the board. I would say it sounds as good, if not slightly better than YouTube Music. Uh, not as good as something like Spotify. I never used Tidal uh, myself, but I know Tidal has very good quality with the uh, master quality sound. Uh, but YouTube Music has very solid qu uh, quality coming through now uh, compared to what it used to be. And it definitely made me very pleased when I went on this journey of going back to YouTube music and using it again in order to prepare for this video. Um, the only time that the quality of music does suffer is because YouTube music does pull from YouTube if it doesn't have a track in its library. If you're going to something like an old mixtape where the tracks were uploaded to YouTube but it's not CD quality, the sound will suffer in those instances. But that's few and far between because of the fact that the entire music library that's present on Google Play Music is also present on YouTube Music. Uh, so it's those tracks, unless you're doing something that's really far off the beaten path and was not a proper studio release, uh, you're going to find that lower quality starting to kick in at that aspect. Um, and even with that, mixtapes were starting to make their way to streaming platforms as well, even though they're not something that uh, artists monetize. Uh, so you are finding that there are mixtapes that are out there that do have that CD quality sound and aren't getting audio straight from a YouTube video, but rather having actual MP3s that were uploaded by the artist or by a record label to the service, you have that high quality sound uh, for some of those tracks as well. Um, another thing with YouTube Music is that even though it's a music app, it's still very video based. So when you're scrolling through your recommendations, it's not really a lot of audio only options that is have that is popping up. It's not like it's popping up, uh, you know, new albums and new playlists that are music based. It's really pushing up like new music videos, you know, trending music videos, uh, music music video playlist. Everything is very video based. So if you're looking for just a music experience, um, I do hear that the home screen changes after a while. And if you're using it primarily for music, it will get more music based versus more video based. I haven't seen that for myself, but if you know, I continue to use it and I see that maybe I'll do an update video at that time to let you know what I'm finding with that. Or I'll, maybe I'll just drop a comment in the bottom of uh, this video to let you know what updates I have with that. But at this time, using it in the beginning, it is very video focused. I'm more audio focused. I'm not really sitting and watching music videos on my phone or casting them to my TV that much. So for me, that's a little bit annoying, but not so much that by itself is like driving me away from uh, the service. So one thing with uh, Google Play Music that YouTube Music does not have yet is the ability to work with your navigation apps, uh, specifically with Google Maps and with Waze. Uh, so with Google Maps, you can actually have Spotify or Google Play Music linked up so that you have your navigation controls and your music controls all in one place as you're navigating down the road. And that's definitely very handy. You know, if you're using navigation, you don't wanna have to switch back and forth between different apps to you know get your music right while you're driving to your destination. Uh, Waze only has connections with Spotify at this time. Uh, hopefully they'll move that so that uh, YouTube Music has uh, that same type of functionality as well because Waze is also a Google product. Uh, so seeing that you have that feature in Google with Google Maps and Google Play Music, but not with YouTube Music is definitely something that hurts a lot uh, because that's a feature I do use on a daily basis. Uh, so hopefully that's another thing with the feature parity that they bring over to YouTube Music to make it more of a daily driver for your music experience. So another thing that I'm missing from Google Play Music in YouTube Music is that music locker. That's probably the number one thing they're looking at trying to get over to YouTube Music to really start getting the migration going. And for me, that is a huge deal because I have a decent amount of songs in that music locker uh, from stuff that I had from back in the day that wasn't or that isn't on streaming platforms, but I do have it personally and it's of high quality and I wanted to be able to listen to it. So that's the main thing that would keep me from adopting YouTube Music full time and would make me very unhappy if Google Play Music was to disappear tomorrow and I did not have access to those tracks. Sure, they might still be on my laptop, but I want to be able to listen to them on the go. I don't want to necessarily load all that music onto the storage on my phone. I want to be able to stream them and have access to that music 
wherever I am at any time, as long as I have access to the internet. That's the beauty of streaming. That's the beauty of, of subscriptions. And that really was the main feature for Google Play Music that made me really jump to that service when it first launched. The fact that I could have my own music library uploaded to the cloud and have access to it wherever I go and not have to worry about storing it to my phone. That was absolutely brilliant. And that is to me the killer feature of Google Play Music uh, that really locked me in at that time. And something that I'm really looking forward to moving over to YouTube Music when that time eventually comes. So with all that, hopefully that clears up some of the confusion around Google and what their strategy is with music apps. If you're a Google music app or audio app user, drop a comment below. Let me know what your favorite one is, what feature you're really looking forward to moving from Google Play Music over to YouTube Music, or if you're just going to kind of be done with Google services altogether and just fully migrate over to a service like Spotify or Tidal or maybe even Apple Music. It is on Android. So, you know, if you're into that, you have that option as well. Personally, uh, I use Spotify primarily for my music. Um, and then I, when I do Uber driving or Lyft driving, I like to keep a little bit of work-life separation with that. So I have my edited playlist that I'm going through in Google Play Music and then my podcast off through Google Podcasts when I'm listening to work throughout the day. So I'm all over the place, but it gives me the separation that I like for all those different music services. So Spotify for my personal music because that's the best sound quality. Google Play Music, so that way I have that edited music kind of at the go without having to worry about what's popping up on that playlist and then podcast off to the side primarily for work. So let me know what your music solution looks like, what apps you use, what your favorite services and what features you would like to see added to YouTube Music if it's not there already or a feature that you would like to see added that neither YouTube Music nor Google Play Music have. Interested to see your feedback below. Also, don't forget to go ahead, subscribe to the channel. It means a lot to me. Share this video with some friends. And of course, ring that notification bell so you don't miss anything coming up. And until next time, Techie Reggie out.